the chapter 3 basic human aspirations and their fulfillment recap in the previous chapters we explored into the need guideline content and process of value education followed by the details of self exploration self exploration is a process of understanding human values first by exploring within on the basis of our natural acceptance and then by validating it experientially by exploring outside by living accordingly and observing the outcomes we have also discussed about natural acceptance and how it forms the basis of self exploration while discussing self exploration we mentioned that there are two issues to be explored first what is basic aspiration of a human being and second what is the process of process to fulfill this basic aspiration so in this chapter we will discuss these two issues further what is meant by basic aspiration whatever we think whatever we do is with some end in mind we may be going to school to learn and to be eligible for college we may be doing engineering in order to get a job we may be working in a job uh, in a job for the salary we may be shopping with the with that salary like that there is a chain of thoughts and actions you can observe that when we achieve one of these we tend to move on to something else after school is completed we start preparing for entrance exam examinations when we get admissions into a college we become concerned about the assignments grades and the rank once that is done placement becomes our target like that we keep doing something which is which we consider to be important at any given point in time out of these which is our basic aspiration is it learning what is taught in school or getting that engineering degree or the job or the salary from the job or the shopping let's ask ourselves what will make us fulfilled let us find out if there is an end goal which we want to achieve through all these is there an end state that we want to reach and then we want the continuity of that state that end state is our basic aspiration the continuous happiness and prosperity as basic human aspiration to explore into the question of basic aspiration ask yourself the following questions do you want to be happy do you want to be prosperous do you want the continuity of happiness and prosperity the answers are in affirmative yes right we have a natural acceptance to be happy all the time we have a natural acceptance to be always prosperous the basic human aspirations are happiness prosperity and its continuity we may of course have different notions of happiness and prosperity but we do want to be happy and prosperous we may at times even feel that their continuity is not possible but still we want to be always happy and always prosperous there is no moment when we want to be unhappy or when we want to be deprived this is what we are trying to confirm here by referring to our natural acceptance basic requirements for fulfillment of human aspirations let us explore further by asking ourselves the following questions are we happy are we prosperous is there continuity of the two what answer do you get is it an affirmative yes as far as the basic aspiration or desire is concerned there is very much an affirmative yes but it, but when it comes to our state of being it's not always so affirmative isn't it 
There is quite a gap between our basic aspiration and our state of being. And this is not naturally acceptable to us, is it? Let us continue the exploration further. Let us find out if our effort is for continuity of happiness and prosperity or just for accumulation of physical facility. When we reflect on all the effort we are making, we can easily see that we are generally working for accumulation of physical facility. We are expecting happiness and prosperity, but the effort is for physical things. We don't even find out if we have enough physical facility or not. Will it actually ensure happiness and prosperity or not? But we go on accumulating more and more. We are making this effort with the assumption that we will get happiness and prosperity out of the physical things. Find out if you have assumed that happiness and prosperity will automatically come when you have enough physical facility. This may be one underlying assumption. We might be thinking that money is everything. Once we have enough of it, everything will be all right. We will have happiness and prosperity. We may not even be aware that we have such an assumption driving our effort. So go ahead and check if this is the case. We can explore further by asking ourselves, what effort are we making for continuity of happiness and prosperity other than accumulation of physical facility? If we have not assumed that physical facility is all that is required, then what else are we doing apart from that? This is something we need to explore in our own life. Where are we putting in our effort? We spend time in eating, sleeping, developing skills, working, watching TV and so on. We are putting in most of our effort for physical facility. This may be because most of the time we have been trained to study for it. <coughs> 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 This may be because most of the time we have been trained to study for it, work for it and achieve it as much as possible. With all that effort, even if we are missing on account of happiness, we tend to keep working harder and harder for more and more physical facility. If continuity of happiness and prosperity is not achieved by just accumulation of physical facility, then what else is essential to do? Let us try to find out by asking these questions to ourselves. Is the unhappiness in my family more due to lack of physical facility or more due to lack of fulfillment in the relationship? Whenever there is any unhappiness in our family, what is the major reason for it? When you explore into it, you will find that the major reason for the unhappiness in the family is the lack of fulfillment in relationship. Don't just, just accept this conclusion, but check it yourself. Now to look the investment of your effort, find out how much time and effort you are investing for physical facility and how much time and effort you are investing for fulfillment in a relationship. What is roughly the percentage of your total time and effort spent for physical facility. Eating, sleeping, working, studying and so on are all related to physical facility. You can find out for yourself how your time is spent. Generally, most of the time and effort is being invested for physical facility, assuming that everything is going to be fine when there is enough physical facility then there will be no problem, there will be no unhappiness in the family. In the meanwhile, if any issue of relationship has cropped up, we try to invest some time to patch it up or somehow manage it. Many times we again invest physical facility to compensate for the dissatisfactions or complaints in a relationship. If we are not able to give time to the family in day-to-day -day life, we then try to spend time with them on weekends, on dining out, by watching movies together or giving some gift and so on. 
all this is possible only by investing physical facility so we work even harder but does it work the problems are more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship and we are investing major part of our time and effort for physical facility we are so careful about investing money and other material resources but when it comes to investing ourselves our time and effort for relationship we are not very aware about it this is certainly not a right kind of investment can you see that the unhappiness in your family is more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship but the major part of time or most of the time and effort is spent for physical facility with all this discussion the conclusion that we want to draw out of this is a very simple one for human being physical facility is necessary but relationship is also necessary does it make sense is it true for you now we can see that as far as human being is concerned physical facility is a necessity but relationship is also necessary both are important in fact by seeing this we can understand the difference between animals and human beings physical facility is necessary for animals as well as for human beings for animals it is necessary as well as adequate which means that animals can be satisfied with physical facility alone but when it comes to human beings this is not the case physical facility is a necessity but physical facility alone is not going to suffice for the fulfillment of human being to take an example when an animal has a lack of physical facility it becomes uncomfortable when it has the physical facility it becomes comfortable when a cow gets a stomach full of grass it becomes comfortable sits and chews the cud with enough grass to fill the stomach the cow is comfortable but what about a human being when a human being has lack of physical facility he or she becomes uncomfortable and unhappy once he or she gets the physical facility he or she forgets about it and starts thinking about many other things does it happen with you once you do, do not have a facility that you need you keep thinking about how to get it you want does not have enough to eat he will feel low but once he has enough food it is simply ignored forgotten if you don't get enough to eat we are uncomfortable and unhappy if we have enough to eat we tend to forget about food and start thinking of many other things if you do not have a house of your own it occupies your thought much of the time but once you have a house of your own you simply forget about it and start thinking about so many other things like furniture in the house your career your social connections etc and if they are not up to your expectations you start feeling anxious seldom you feel happy that you have a house of your own can you see that we keep asking participants of our human value workshops do you know how many pairs of clothes you have generally more not more than 10% of the people even know how many pairs of clothes they have that means if we did not have clothes we would have been be unhappy and uncomfortable but now that we have clothes most of us tend to forget about it and of course we have many other things to think about so we can conclude that physical facility is necessary for animals it is necessary for human beings also however for animals physical facility is necessary as well as adequate for human beings physical facility is necessary but physical facility alone is not adequate when it comes to human being the lack of physical facility makes him uncomfortable and unhappy but availability of physical facility alone does not ensure the feeling of happiness or prosperity something more is required and if you look at what more is required fulfillment of relationship is also required can you see this imagine being in a five star hotel for a month 
with every facility except that you have no one to talk to. While we do have a natural acceptance to live in relationship, are we actually living in relationship? Have you understood this or just assumed it? To explore this further, find out if 1. You want to live in relationship with others or 2. You want to live in opposition with others or 3. You believe living has to be necessarily in opposition with others that is there is struggle for survival or survival of the fittest and if you feel happy living it this way. A little introspection will show that out of these three what is naturally acceptable is the first one, isn't it? You certainly do not want to live in opposition with others. But you may be conditioned to think in a manner as mentioned in the third option because this is mostly what we are teaching today in the schools and colleges. Relationship is naturally acceptable to us but we, what we are trying to teach the children is opposition and struggle. If we adopt a third option, it has significant negative implications in our life, in the family and in the society and we can see this all around today. In relationship, what is generally happening today is something like this. Every time when there is a fight, we want to resolve it. We start the next day with the thought that we don't want to fight today. But a fight takes place again, sometimes by the end of the same day. Does this happen with you? With your brother, sister, father, mother, spouse, children, with your friends, co-workers, etc. Getting irritated, angry, not speaking for days on end, dragging each other to court, divorces, etc. are indicators of the situation in relationship. While there is a willingness to live in relationship, the right understanding about relationship is lacking. The competence to fulfill the relationship is lacking. That is why this fight and all these other problems in relationship happen again and again. We think it is the fault of the other person. We want them to improve. They think it's our fault and they want us to improve. Neither improves and we somehow try to manage relationship. For ensuring fulfillment in relationship, it is necessary to have a right understanding about relationship. Can you see this? Further, right understanding about oneself, vis a -vis, the rest of nature is also necessary in order to correctly assess our need for physical facility and the correct method for making it available. Right understanding relationship and physical facility, all three are required for fulfillment of human being. From the preceding discussion, it may be concluded that for fulfillment of human being, physical facility, relationship, and right understanding, all three are necessary. It is indicated by figure 3.3. Now you can find out if all three of them are required, or you can do away with any of them. Do you need physical facility? Do you need fulfillment in relationship? Do you need right understanding? Is there anything unnecessary, superfluous? We can easily make out that all three are required. These three are of different types. To explore this further, let us look at these situations. It's hot and humid and you are sweating. If you switch on an air conditioner, does the cool air from it help? You can see that it makes the environment more conducive and your body is no longer sweating. The air conditioner and the cool air are physical facility. It is used for protecting the body from excessive heat. Now you're sitting in that air conditioned room, a person with whom you have a feeling of opposition walks into the room. Your body is comfortable with the cool air, but how do you feel within? Comfortable or uncomfortable? With a little exploration, you will be able to see that you would feel uncomfortable. It is due to the feeling of opposition that is within you. 
check if it will make any difference if you made the room cooler or warmer after this person has left the room you are sitting alone but you are still thinking of that person you have contradictions in your thought you are thinking about how to resolve these contradictions but you are unable to will you feel comfortable with him or uncomfortable with him once again you can see that you will be uncomfortable with him regardless of the temperature of the air conditioner without the requisite knowledge the right understanding of relationship and the feeling in relationship can you resolve these uh, contradictions can any amount of physical facility resolve these contradictions in you we can see that physical facility relationship and right understanding are three distinct realities when we look them in more detail we can see that right understanding in the self is understanding myself understanding all that i live with the entire existence and understanding my role with respect to all that i live with that is myself my family society nature existence relationship is essentially the feeling i have for other human being in the family in the society physical facility includes all things physical all three are required for fulfillment of human being one cannot be substituted for the other next let us let us find out if you are taking care of all the three of them or are you largely are we largely focusing on physical facility you can see that we need all three of them but today the major focus is on physical facility now you can verify if this prevalent belief that physical facility can take care of everything is true or not can we take care of relationship with physical facility alone can we take care of right understanding with physical facility alone priority right understanding relationship and physical facility now the next question is that if all three of them are required what is going to be the priority priority indicates what is fundamental what is the relative importance working on the higher priority facilitates the fulfillment of the lower priority it does not mean that we can do away with the lower priority to identify the priority of order find out what is fundamental what is going to facilitate the other we can ask this question about priority directly to ourselves to get the answer take some time and think it over all three of them are required right understanding in the self is a priority because only with the right understanding we can ensure fulfillment in relationship and we are able to make out how much physical facility is required therefore right understanding is the first priority as we discussed the problems in the family are more due to lack of fulfillment in relationship rather than the lack of physical facility it indicates that the relationship is more important than physical facility to take an example we can take a look at the sharing of this lady who participated in one of the evening human values workshops two days after the exploration of the three distinct realities and their priority right understanding relationship and physical facility she shared that while she had come into the workshop with the assumption that physical facility was the major priority in life her exploration during the workshop helped her see things differently she was in the kitchen while her two sons aged about 5 and 8 were playing cricket inside the house hearing the sound of the shattered window pane she rushed out of the kitchen but before she reached the kitchen she recollected the newly proposed priority she has not had an opportunity to verify the priority yet it was still unverified while walking towards the children she reflected on this proposal and reflected i can get the window pane repaired for a small amount but it would take much more if i were to lose the affection of my children she recognized her feeling 
which reflected outside as follows. She asked the boys, I hope you are not hurt. While she collected the broken glass pieces and put them in the dustbin. We are okay, said the older one. And as she was going back to the kitchen, the younger one said, What do you beat us? He had this question based on past behavior of his mother, who in a state of unawareness valued physical facility more than the children's feelings. Now if you look at this overall priority, right understanding is the first priority. Fulfillment in relationship with the human being is the second priority and ensuring physical facility with the rest of nature is the third priority. Regarding priority, we will keep it open as to whether this is the right priority for you or not. Feel free to experiment with the priority order and come to your own conclusion. One thing is very clear that all three of them are required. The right understanding of the self is required, the fulfillment in relationship with human being is required and physical facility with the rest of nature is required. And all three have to be ensured separately what cannot be substituted by the other. It is interesting that out of these three, today, generally we are not taking care of the first priority. We are not taking care of the second priority. The major focus is on the third priority. Can you see this? Can you see that our major focus is not on right understanding in the self, not on fulfillment in relationship, but the major focus is on physical facility. And now you can see that if we are not focusing on the first two priorities and we are only trying to work with physical facility, where will we end up? Similarly, if we take care of all three of them, what is the result? What is the outcome? We would like to investigate this next. If you are only working for physical facility, the outcome is depicted here. At the level of physical facility, we are feeling deprived and we are making others deprived or exploiting others. When we don't have right understanding about relationship in the self, we are not able to ensure fulfillment in relationship, therefore we are unhappy within. When we are unhappy within, we are going to make others unhappy, isn't it? To exemplify this point, we particularly ask mothers, when do you shout or beat the child? When you are comfortable within or uncomfortable within? The answer is simple, uncomfortable within. When you are unhappy within, you make the others unhappy. You can find this out for yourself in the interaction with family members and friends. If you don't have right understanding about a relationship, we don't know about the feelings in the relationship. If you have not ensured those feelings in us, we are unhappy within. In that state of unhappiness, we are not able to ensure fulfillment in relationship. We make others unhappy. This is one outcome. The other outcome is that if the right understanding is missing, we are not able to identify our need for physical facility. Now, if you are not able to identify our need for physical facility, then regardless of how much physical facility we accumulate, we never feel that we have enough. We keep wanting more. This feeling of not having enough is the feeling of deprivation. Now if we have a feeling of deprivation, will we think of nurturing others or exploiting others? Find it out. Again the answer is simple, we will think of exploiting others to get more and more physical facility. Once, while taking tea with students, we asked them a funny question. Come, let's find out how much tea will be needed to fill this cup, if it does not have a bottom. Naturally, they were amused and smilingly replied, Sir, are you joking? It is so obvious that if this cup doesn't have a bottom, there is no question of it getting filled. No amount of tea will be sufficient to fill it up. But why are you asking? as such a trivial question. Then the discussion continued. So you can see that if this cup has no bottom, there is no question of ensuring its filling. That's good. You all, you all appreciate this so easily. Now let us look at the cup of our aspiration for physical facility. 
for money. Does it have a bottom? Do you know how much physical facility you require? If you don't know how much is required, can you ever feel prosperous regardless of how much you earn? Isn't this obvious enough? It gives a clue to the assumptions driving so many of us who are engaged in pursuing more and more physical facility. Ponder over this. If you do not know how much physical facility we require, we will never have a feeling of prosperity, regardless of how much we accumulate. The accumulation of physical facility may go on increasing, but our feeling of deprivation will continue. And if we feel deprived, we think of depriving others, exploiting others and accumulating more and more. If you look around, there are generally two kinds of people today. One, those lacking physical facility, unhappy and deprived. Two, those having physical facility, unhappy and deprived. Do you see these two types of people? Do you see people who don't have enough physical facility and they are deprived and also unhappy? Do you see people who have lots of physical facility but still they don't feel that they have enough and they need more and more? Such people do not have the right understanding of their need of, for physical facility, so they keep feeling deprived and unhappy. Try to find out where are you at 1 or at 2. You see, the whole concept of what is called development today largely takes us from 1 to 2. While working for development, we are focusing on a good outside environment, lavish infrastructure, etc. Is it sufficient for your happiness and prosperity? The nice apartment, 24-hour electricity, the running water, laptop, mobile, a big car, wide roads, trains, planes and all this may be required. However, is it sufficient to ensure continuity of your happiness and prosperity? Through education, if we are focused on that good job, just for a high salary and more and more physical facility, Without having clarity on how much is required, it can only take us from 1 to 2 and it can never ensure happiness, prosperity and continuity of the two. Whereas we really want to be in the following state, that is 3. Having physical facility, happy and prosperous. Find out what is naturally acceptable to you to be in state 1, 2 or 3. It is easy to see that we naturally want to be in the state 3 of having more than enough physical facility, happy and prosperous, isn't it? However, where are we today? At 1, 2 or 3? And even more importantly, what is our effort for? 1, 2 or 3? Now, if you are able to ensure all three, that is right understanding, the relationship, and physical facility in that order of priority, let us see the outcome. Through right feeling in relationship based on right understanding, we can ensure mutual happiness. Happiness for ourselves as well as happiness for others. With right understanding, we can identify the need for physical facility. We can also learn how to produce using a mutually enriching production process. Once we are able to ensure the availability of more than required physical facility, we have a feeling of prosperity, isn't it? Now ask yourself, when you have a feeling of prosperity within you, will you think of nurturing others or exploiting others? Think about it. When you can see that you have more than what is required, that is you have a feeling of prosperity, you will naturally think of nurturing others and not exploiting others. You will think of helping others in their effort for prosperity. If someone is thinking of exploiting others, it simply indicates that he has a feeling of deprivation, not of prosperity. Right understanding plus relationship gives mutual happiness. Right understanding plus physical facility gives mutual prosperity. In this way, with right understanding and fulfillment in relationship, we can ensure mutual happiness. 
with right understanding and enough physical facility working with the rest of nature we can ensure mutual prosperity mutual enrichment therefore by ensuring right understanding relationship and physical facility we can ensure happiness and prosperity for ourselves and work for happiness and prosperity for others can you see that development of human consciousness the basic aspiration of human being that is happiness prosperity and its continuity are fulfilled by right understanding relationship and physical facility in that priority order a human being working for all three of them can be fulfilled therefore a human being living with all three is living with human consciousness on the other hand if one is living with physical facility alone one is living with animal consciousness while physical facility may suffice for animals it is not adequate for human beings to be fulfilled now you can find out if development would basically mean development of human consciousness in the human being or just the development of physical facility is sufficient a word of caution here by the word animal consciousness we are not trying to demean animals the so animals living with animal consciousness living for physical facility alone living for food shelter etc are just fine there are they are in harmony with the rest of nature only when human beings try to fulfill themselves on the basis of physical facility alone they tend to be in disharmony within and in disharmony with the other the problem is with human beings living in animal consciousness you can see that opposition struggle war etc is an account of such human beings we may call this as inhuman consciousness or something else if animal consciousness gives a sense of demeaning the animals holistic development that is transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness with this background refer to figure 36 and ask yourself one what is naturally acceptable to you to live with animal consciousness or to live with human consciousness two where are we now living with animal consciousness or human consciousness three whether this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness is desirable or not desirable keep exploring these questions if we see today the world is largely focused on physical facility as the sole or primary measure of progress and development nations measure gross domestic product gdp and its growth rate as the key indicators for development families and individuals also have a similar notion of their own well-being they use job position net worth bank balance the house the cars and the other physical facility as indicators of progress development and success the predominant perception regarding development success and prosperity is largely to do with accumulation of physical facility that is more and more physical facility this perception is there in the society in the education system and even in the family find out if you are also only trying to make this circle of physical facility bigger and bigger like making effort for a salary of 10000 rupees 50000 1 lakh and so on find out if all this is taking you to human consciousness is just making the circle of physical facility bigger sufficient for the continuity of happiness and prosperity find out if just increasing the quantity and variety of physical facility alone is enough for development with right understanding we can clearly envisage holistic development as the transformation of consciousness from animal consciousness to human consciousness 
Of course, it will necessitate working on all three, right understanding, fulfillment in relationship, as well as physical facility in that order of priority. Role of education sanskar, that is enabling the transformation to human consciousness. We are providing inputs to the children in many ways. Starting from the family, the parents and other family members are providing inputs right from day one. The formal education system, that is schools, colleges, universities, etc. are also providing inputs. And the society is giving inputs through the role models, through the media and so many other means. All this put together shape the perspective and feelings of a child. Can you see that? All these inputs put together is what we are calling education sanskar. Education is developing the right understanding, which is the holistic perspective. Sanskar is the commitment, preparation and practice of living with right understanding. The preparation includes learning appropriate skills and technology. We will build all the details as we go along. The role of education is to facilitate the development of the competence to live with human consciousness with definite human conduct. For this, the education sanskar has to ensure 1. A right understanding in every child 2. The capacity to live in relationship with other human beings and 3. The capacity to identify the need for physical facility the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required leading to the feeling of prosperity. These are three components of education sanskar. If it has to ensure development of human consciousness. With this, let us see whether we are ensuring all three of them or not in the present day education sanskar. We can see that today in our programs of education, one, the first one is largely missing. Are we teaching the students to explore and know, have right understanding or to assume and reproduce the content? Two, the second one is largely missing. Are we teaching relationship and cooperation or opposition and competition? Three, and in the third one, you will see that identification of need for physical facility is missing. The willingness to produce by way of labor is also missing. The core feeling that is being generated is to accumulate more and more, to consume more and more rather than to produce as per need. One of our colleagues shared this incident. He said, I was having a discussion with the final year students of a well-known institute. I asked the students about their expectations when they graduate. One of the students very articulately said, number one, good job, that is good salary. Number two, job satisfaction. And then slowly he had it. Number three, if possible, no work. Present day education is setting such expectations in students. Is that happening? You can reflect on your expectations and experience from the present day education. Education provides thought leadership and direction to the society through the preparation of individuals. This long term potential of human education sanskar is 1. Right understanding in every child by facilitating the development of right understanding it will lead to living in human consciousness. 2. The capacity to live in relationship by facilitating the capacity to live with the mutual happiness or justice in relationship with other human beings, it will ensure harmony in the family and that harmony will extend to the larger family and ultimately go up to the world family leading to an undivided society. 3. The capacity to identify the need for physical facility, developing the skills and practice for sustainable production of more than what is required leading to the feeling of prosperity. A mindset of production through labor and of right utilization of the physical facility. This will ensure harmonious family order and extend beyond the family order through participation by the family members in the larger societal systems.
ultimately to universal human order. This is the proposal about the role of education. If you can see this, you will see that the role of education is essentially to facilitate holistic development, that is the individual transformation to human consciousness as well as the societal transformation to universal human order. We will discuss both these transformations in chapters to follow. To sum up, our basic aspiration of continuity of happiness and prosperity is fulfilled by right understanding, the relationship and physical facility in that priority order. The most significant human activity towards this end is human education sanskar.